Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be replacing some water heater elements. This is for an electric water heater. So what you're going to need is a replacement water heater element. Now most of the time it's going to be a 240 volt element uh, around 4500 or 4400 watts. So that's going to be your most standard. So I'll link to something like this in the description. And then the other thing that you're going to need is a big old wrench to be able to take the element out. And I'll link to uh, these things in the description so you can pick up a proper wrench for removing the existing elements because sometimes those things can really be in there. Now I'm not going to go into depth as far as the troubleshooting part, figuring out if the elements are bad or not. I will briefly show you how to do that with an electrical tester, but I did go in depth explaining the entire process for how to diagnose if the thermostats are good or if the elements are bad or what have you. So I'll link that video underneath this one. So if you're still in the process of figuring out if you have bad elements or bad thermostat components, uh, go watch that video first. And then if you determine that you do indeed have a bad element, come back here and then we'll go ahead and replace it. But for now, let's go ahead and get this thing replaced. Uh, we're going to uh, turn the power off to this water heater. And then we are also going to uh, turn the water off to the whole house. Now, a lot of times there will be a valve right above the water heater, sometimes two valves if you're lucky. So you can turn the valves off here, but in this case there are no valves, so we're going to go turn the water off at the main right over there. So let's go do that really quick. In this case our main water valve is just kind of in the corner of the basement, so we can just get a hold of that and turn it off. This is just a full port ball valve. And now that our water has been turned off to the entire house, we can actually start draining the water heater with a garden hose attached over to a floor drain because we want to drain the water down below the level of the elements that we're going to be replacing. Now before you start draining the water heater down, you do want to go ahead and shut the power off because if your elements are still good, you don't want to fry them. And the way you ruin water heater elements is by leaving the power turned on with the water drained out. And that will cause those elements to overheat and eventually fail. So we'll go ahead and get this started draining down. I think for today we're going to go ahead and just empty it all the way. It's also good once in a while to empty it all the way out uh, because it will allow you to kind of flush out the bottom of that water heater. Now you'll see that the water started slowing down significantly. It's just kind of a, a trickle there now. And the way we can help this drain a little bit faster is to go upstairs and open a couple of hot water faucets or the highest point in your building. Uh, if you open a hot water faucet, uh, it will help this uh, drain back, even a cold water faucet for that matter. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go ahead and open the hot and the cold. You can hear that it's pulling air into the faucet. And then you can see that it is draining a little bit faster now that we have those valves opened up. Now that our power is turned off at the circuit breaker, we're going to remove these covers and then we'll verify with an electrical tester that there indeed is no power. All right, we're going to start by verifying that we have no voltage coming into these top two terminals right here. So if we check between here and here, you can see we have no voltage. And now to be doubly sure, we can take and check from the tank to these terminals and just make sure that we have virtually no voltage. And you can see that that is true. No voltage here at all. You just want to be extra careful and make sure that you uh, that there's no power when you're working with this stuff. Now to uh, verify really quickly that we do indeed have a bad element, I'm going to remove the wires from the element and then we'll do a continuity test. So we'll put our tester into continuity mode. And you'll see when we cross these that it beeps, indicating that we have continuity. So we shouldn't have any across these two terminals. So you can see right there, it says out of limit OL, stands for out of limit. And uh, that uh, means that we do not have a good element here. Let me show you what the good element does really quickly. So right here is our good element. It's 240 volts and 4,500 watts. So if we go ahead and check across these uh, terminals here, let's get them lined up. 
we do have continuity and it tells us right here that we have 12.2 ohms which is about what we're looking for so this element is good the existing one is no good now we should be getting close to where the water has drained down past this element so pretty soon we should be able to go ahead and spin this guy out the size of socket that you're typically going to need is an inch and a half, but sometimes it can be up to an inch and seven eighths. So I will link to an inch and a half and inch and seven eighths wrench in the description, so go ahead and click on that right underneath this video. And if you only happen to have metric wrenches laying around, then 38 millimeter is very close to one and a half inches. Go ahead and get our wrench over the top of our old element, and then we'll just give it a good push like so. And it's loose already. So that one wasn't bad at all to break free. And now we should be able to just turn it out the rest of the way with our fingers. And now if water starts to come out a little bit, then you'll want to just wait a minute until it drains down far enough to prevent any water from leaking out. So we'll go ahead and take this thing out of here. You can see right there that the element is kind of bowed over and that's because this thing was turned on while the water heater didn't have enough water in it to cover the element. Therefore, it started to melt and droop down and ultimately fried the element. So uh, to prevent that, just make sure that you fill the water heater completely before turning it on. I've seen these things totally bent over all the way down and sometimes they just corrode and eventually fail even if they don't overheat so it's just a normal part that you sometimes have to replace and right here is the new element so we'll go ahead and slide that into position make sure that you have your gasket already installed on the uh, threads of your element you don't necessarily need to put any thread sealant on this sometimes I will put a little bit of pipe dope on here some PTFE thread sealant I will link that in the description if you guys want one thing that is a good idea though is to get this gasket and everything just a little bit wet so that it doesn't bind up on the dry surface of this fitting when you're tightening it in place. So I'll go ahead and get that a little bit damp quick. Make sure none of the insulation gets in around the gasket because you need there to, that to be a nice and clean surface. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our wires on the end of the element and it doesn't matter which wire goes to which side, it doesn't make any difference to the element, it thinks it's the same thing either way because we're uh, working with 120 volts on each leg for a total of 240 volts. Just get them good and snug. We'll come back and check on the upper element again here in a bit but for now let's go down and check out the lower one and make sure that that is working correctly. So here we're looking at the lower element and you can see I've already pulled one wire off of the end of the element and that will allow us to test it. You technically don't have to take both wires off to test it. So we're just in scan mode on the electrical tester and when I touch it across the two terminals you can see it says out of limit. There is no continuity there. It's giving us a reading like it thinks it's a capacitor or something even. So this element is bad but for reference let me just show you what the new element does once again. So here's our brand new uh, element that is rated at 240 volts and 4,500 watts. So I'll go ahead and put our probes across there. And you can see we're reading 12.7 ohms. So this is our new element we're good to go with. So let's pull out the old one. And our water heater has completely finished draining now. So you can see we're replacing the top element first and then following up with the lower one gives you time to uh, work on the top one while the rest of the water heater is draining down. So right there is the old element. You can see this one also melted a little bit. It probably failed in a very similar way. You can see where the uh, element has split open even a little bit right there, right where my screwdriver is kind of pointing there. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that these things can oftentimes heat 
or continue to heat even after the element has totally failed because you'll have electricity that's basically leaking out into the water which will still heat the water. So even though this water heater had two bad elements, it still was heating the water just a little bit. Put a little bit of water on our gasket again so we're ready to go ahead and put this element in place. Try to make sure that there's no uh, debris in that spot where the gasket sits so that you can get a good quality seal on there. That's it right there. We'll reconnect our wires. Now that we have both of our new elements installed and ready to go, we will go ahead and turn the water on and fill that tank completely up before we turn on the power. If we turn on the power too soon, we're going to fry our brand new elements. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And I'm going to run upstairs and uh, turn off the cold water on that faucet. I am going to leave the hot water on though. That way all of the air can be bled out of the hot water system and the hot water tanks. It's also beneficial to shut the valve off on the uh, garden hose that you drained your water heater with. So if you have not yet done that, go ahead and do that because otherwise it will take a very, very long time for the tank to fill. So we'll come back in about probably 10 minutes once the water heater has completely filled and then we'll turn the power back on and I'll show you that the elements are drawing the proper amperage. There it is. The water heater has officially filled to the top. So we can shut that off now. So now that all the air has been bled out of the lines and the water heater, we can go and fire it up. Now normally what I would do now is put the covers back on and fire it up, but I'm actually going to turn this thing on while the covers are off so that we can get an amp reading on that element to make sure that it is drawing properly. This is just to demonstrate to you. I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing this. If you replace bad elements, you really probably don't even need to verify this. Uh, you can just go ahead and put your covers on before turning the power on. But for now, we're going to turn the power on and I will uh, show you that this is drawing proper amperage and also kind of explain the the sequence of how this thing heats. So I'm going to turn the power on in three, two, one. Now the way these electric water heaters work is that it actually heats the upper element first. So it wants to heat that water closest to the top so that you get quick recovery of hot water. So if you had no hot water or you used some, they want to heat up that top portion of the tank first. Once that has finished heating up, then it will automatically switch over. The upper thermostat here will switch it over and send power down to the lower element and then heat the bottom portion of the tank. So that's how it operates. So you won't have both elements operating at the same time. We'll have a total of just 4,500 watts being drawn at any given time. It never brings on both elements at once. We're going to start by just measuring the voltage coming into the top here and verify that we do have 240 volts, which we do. We have actually 248 volts, so we might even draw a tiny bit over 4,500 watts. So 248 volts. Now we'll go ahead and see how many amps we're drawing on this element. I'll switch into amps alternating current. And right there, we are drawing 19.89 amps. So 20 amps uh, almost is being drawn to this upper element. We'll take our calculator and uh, take our 19.75 amps right now. 19.75 times our voltage of 248 volts equals 4,898 watts. So we're drawing 4,000 almost 900 watts instead of 4,500. And that's since that slightly higher voltage is going to cause that element to draw a little bit more wattage overall. Now, if you had a slightly lower voltage coming into your water heater, like 230 volts, uh, you would be drawing significantly less on your wattage, but it's all related to what the voltage coming into your water heater is. So it doesn't matter that much. Either way, we're drawing close to 19 or 20 amps on this upper element. And if I go down to the lower element, we won't actually be drawing any amperage. Let's go ahead and check it though anyway. 
So right here we'll just clamp our meter around one of the two wires going to the element and you'll see that we are drawing zero amps. So nothing is going to happen down here until the upper portion of the water heater uh, finishes heating and then it will send power down to the lower element and heat up the bottom half of the tank. So real quick I'm going to turn the power back off again and then I'll put all the covers back in place and then we'll fire it up for the last time and we should be good to go. Right underneath this video, I'll put the links to all the different parts and tools that you guys will need for replacing the electric elements in your water heater, so go ahead and check those out. If you do click on one of those links, a very small percentage of your purchase, I think around 2 or 3% of your purchase, will help support the channel. Now you do have to check out on Amazon within 24 hours, otherwise if it's longer than that, then I won't get a commission. Alright, we can turn the power back on again. Now real quick I want to address something that no doubt some people have already brought up in the comment section and that is the fact that I'm wearing this red hat. To me it's something that represents what I am hopeful for and what I uh, am proud to represent as an American. But I realize that not everyone is on the same page when it comes to that meaning. So if you happen to disagree with this hat I just want to say we can still help each other, we can still be friends, and we can still have productive conversations down in the comment section about water heater elements despite our differences here. If you want to fully understand the troubleshooting process for an electric tank type water heater like this, I will put that video right here on the screen so you can click on that and I'll see you over there in just a few seconds where we'll go through the process of uh, diagnosing the upper thermostat, lower thermostat, as well as the elements. I appreciate you guys. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you right over there.